happen? This is Ben Quinones, founder of Asian Solidarity Economic Council. This time I will be presenting the case of uh, mapping of SSE in the Philippines. So we can go to the next page. Okay, so we have already uh, presented this a while ago in the introduction about the criteria for classifying legal organizations. We have the economic feature, democratic feature, and the social feature. And these criteria were applied to classify four major types of legal organizations in the Philippines. The corporation, both for profit and non-profit, they are registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The cooperative, uh, they are registered with the Cooperative Development Authority, Labor Union and Workers Association, registered with the Department of Labor and Employment, and Homeowners Association, registered with Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board. Next, please. So let's first uh, look at uh, the definition of social economy because this is not a common uh, uh, idea or um, a term in the Philippines. Not many people uh, know about this, but uh, generally uh, this is about collective sharing and action and it links the individual interest of the collective interest. Uh, there is cooperation, reciprocity, solidarity among ordinary people. And uh, ECC organizations are mission driven. They prioritize people and planet over about profit. And uh, various forms of organizations, uh, including cooperatives, mutual associations, NGOs, that are engaged in income generating activities, including women's self-help groups uh, and other organizations, associations of informal sector workers, they're also included, fair trade organizations, social enterprises. So many forms of organization. And in a broader sense, the social mission of the ECCE organization is to democratize the distribution of wealth in society. In order to play an active role in the pursuit of this social mission and become classified as SSEO, any legal organization ought to engage in wealth creation through a business enterprise or income generating project, not for the purpose of enriching a few shareholders, but for the greater goal of enhancing the socioeconomic welfare of the broader masses of the people and for conserving the environment. Next slide. So in the uh, classification in the Philippines, we consider cooperative as the classic model of ECCA organization because the cooperative possesses all three criteria, economic, social, and democratic. By design, the three criteria are intrinsic features of the cooperative organizations. So the formation of cooperative is based on the seven universally accepted principles of cooperation, uh, like voluntary and open membership, democratic member control, economic participation, autonomy and independence, education, training and information, cooperation among cooperatives and concern for community. So the core question for the institutional mapping is how close is the fit of other legal organizations to the classic features of the cooperative. So the cooperative is our model and we're looking at different organizations. How close do they look like or do they function like a cooperative? Next slide, please. So there are 19 uh, types of organizations that uh, we look at in the Philippines. And uh, these are the types that are registered with uh, different uh, government agencies, which I mentioned a while ago. And from this, uh, we classified them into uh, whether they are SSE or partial organizations. Next slide. So uh, again, here are the uh, different types of legal organizations. Uh, the first four ones are involved in the mapping. The fifth one, corporations vested in public interest are not uh, included because they have special charters and they are controlled by uh, the uh, institutions like Banco Central in the Philippines, Insurance Commission, and Philippine Stock Exchange. 
Next slide. So this is the result of the mapping. You will note that uh, uh, the first type of ECCO or ECC organization cooperative, but you have also development NGOs that have income generating projects. In other words, they are involved in wealth creation. And when what organization is involved in wealth creation, they are also contributing to wealth distribution in society. People's organization, IGP or income generating projects, persons with disabilities association, those with income generating project, indigenous people, uh, association of indigenous people with IGP, microfinance NGO, mutual benefit association, social enterprises of the poor as primary stakeholder, also social enterprises with non-poor as primary stakeholders, labor unions with IGP, and workers association with IGP. So all of these uh, different types of organizations, they are not registered as cooperatives, but they function like cooperatives because they have members, and then all the members are working together in developing their own income generating activities. Now, there are organizations that are called hybrid. So foundations with income generating projects, professional associations with IGP, private school, university, government owned corporation and controlled corporation, GOCC, local public enterprise. These are organizations that are social economic, social because they have a, a solution for social problem, like government uh, owned and uh, controlled corporations. They, they, must be, uh, they might be uh, established to solve or to address a uh, water problem um, and so forth. Local public enterprise, there are so many public markets established by local government uh, units. So they are called social economic hybrid organizations because they fulfill two criteria, social and economic. But they're also on the right side, social democratic. These organizations are not engaged in any economic activity, but uh, they have a social mission and uh, they are more democratic uh, in uh, governance, but they are not engaged in uh, income generating project. The third type are the economic democratic. So these uh, types, uh, they have, income generating uh, projects. They have democratic organization, but they have no social mission. So uh, this may involve partnership, professional association with income generating project, people's organization, but no social mission, community-based village enterprises. But these are organizations engaged in business, but they have no social mission. Okay, next slide. So if you look at the main source of establishment of these organizations, the basic resource are the human resource. It, uh, it means to say that uh, when they establish these organizations, they rely more on the support of people. It's a membership based rather than on monetary considerations. Uh, may, most of the members here, they just pitch in and so, uh, it is their members' contribution that uh, uh, support their financial standing. Uh, few have um, established, been established uh, because they have money. Uh, for example, microfinance NGOs in the Philippines, uh, when they have money, they can establish. But in the old days, when they started, they also started with human resource. But now, because there's so many uh, uh, financial institutions, donors providing them funds. So many of the uh, later day microfinance NGOs, they establish their microfinance institutions with funding support from donors or from banking institutions. Okay, next slide. So what makes a uh, social solidarity economy organization? Uh, while existing laws prescribe the institutional norm of an organization and the general objective ascribed to the legal entity, in practice, not a few organizations deviate from their mandated purpose. Some call this phenomenon 
mission drift. For example, there are cooperatives and microfinance NGOs becoming very commercially and profit oriented, and they no longer serve the interest of the poor and the socially excluded. So for example, in some other countries, including the Philippines, there are microfinance NGOs that only um, engage in business uh, without really serving the poor. Uh, so uh, there are also cooperatives uh, set up by uh, uh, middle class or even uh, people with money just for the purpose of tax, uh, uh, because their, their uh, income is tax-free. Yeah? Now, there are also for-profit companies. When you expect, uh, when you say uh, profit for profit companies, sometimes uh, the general, general perception of people is that these organizations have no social mission. But today, there are profit and shareholding companies that devote the resources and operations in helping the poor and socially excluded and in protecting the environment instead of only maximizing profit for shareholders. We call these companies social enterprise. So there are no changes in our society that uh, enable uh, even for profit companies to engage in poverty elevation because the stakeholders want to help the poor. But on the other hand, there are also those organizations that were supposed to help the poor but now they have become very profit oriented and they have forgotten their social mission. Okay, next slide, please. So how do we now uh, know whether a cooperative or a comp pro profit company is really an ECC organization? So there is an answer for this. Uh, the lesson derived from uh, this study is that the legal or policy framework might be necessary for mapping social solidarity economy organizations, but it is not sufficient for ascertaining whether an organization truly fits the features of classic CCO. So ASEC, the Asian Solidarity Economy Council, has come to the conclusion that the sufficient condition that must be satisfied is that the human factor acts as the crucial determinant in the making of SSE. What is human factor? Human factors represented by socially responsible governance composed of men and women leaders and managers who are imbued with edifying ethical values. The greater is the quality of the human factor, meaning to say the edifying ethical values have greater influence on the decisions and actions of leadership and management, the closer is the fit of the legal organization to the classic SECO or at least the triple bottom line is SEO. Next slide, please. So we need to have proof of concept because we cannot just uh, proclaim that an organization is SEO or not unless we have proof. So what do we do in ASEC? We conduct case studies of mission-oriented organizations using the five dimensions as analytical framework in order to provide proof of concept of the classic or triple bottom line ECCO. So we are looking for the human factor. Is the organization governed by social responsible managers and leaders? Do these leaders uh, promote and uh, practice a defined ethical values? So these are the questions that we ask. And then also the outcome of this uh, uh, activities and uh, programs of this organization we are asking whether they are contributing to the social development of the community or the people. They are, are they contributing to environment conservation? What are the practices or measures or innovations that they undertake? And do they contribute to economic sustainability of the local area, territories where they are, uh, they are operating? So these are the questions, the five major dimensions that we look into in order to provide proof of concept that this organization is really is, is a organization or not. Okay, next slide. So we noted in this study that cooperatives and workers organization in general yeah, comprise the bulk of ECC organizations in the Philippines. Of course, not all cooperatives and workers organizations can be easily classified as ECC organizations, but uh, by and large, most of them 
are ECC organizations. The total combined number of cooperatives and labor organizations in the country reached 95,416 in 2018. Total membership 15.4 million is about 14% of the total population in the Philippines. The cooperatives focus on developing their business enterprises. While working, while workers uh, organization, they give more emphasis on advancing labor rights. The exception to this uh, are the workers' organization with their own business enterprises and adopt the cooperative principles in running them. This workers' organization with IGP or income generating projects, they function like cooperatives by developing their own business enterprises. Given this, therefore, that there are workers' organizations that are also involved in generating, in uh, establishing and managing their economic enterprises, there therefore exists a favorable condition for collaboration between cooperatives and workers' organizations with business enterprises to collaborate in advancing social society economy in the Philippines. Next slide. So cooperatives have been known to contribute increasingly to job creation. The average number of members per cooperative increased from 312 in 2014 to 699 in 2016 and further to 961 in 2018. So they have become larger, uh, these uh, cooperatives. The average gross domestic product per cooperative also increased from 13 million in uh, 2014 to 31 million in 2016. So their uh, value added or their contribution to GDP also increased. As cooperatives grew larger in size, their job creation capabilities also increased. The average number of persons employed per cooperative increased fivefold from 10 in 2011 to 52 in 2018. It become larger and then they're also able to hire more people. Next slide, please. So workers' organizations have great potential of serving as vehicle for transitioning from the informal sector to the formal sector. In countries like the Philippines, we have a large informal uh, economy uh, where many of the workers, they are not uh, connected to the uh, social protection uh, programs of the government. There are workers' organizations that re-register themselves as multi-purpose cooperative, some examples provided here, in order to undertake their own collective enterprise as well as secure employment for their members in some risk enterprises. So instead of uh, getting employment directly to companies, they organize themselves into workers' uh, organization and they contract their services to the company. So it's the organization that is already hired by the company and the members of the uh, workers organization get the jobs. This is uh, a more uh, uh, acceptable arrangement to many workers because it provides them stability in job. Uh, also for the companies, uh, they are no longer bound you know, for so much of these uh, legal uh, provisions for taking care of labor. Now, there are three types of labor organizations in the Philippines, labor unions in the public sector, labor unions in the private sector, and workers' organizations largely comprised of self-employed persons and workers in the formal sector. Workers' organizations comprise almost four-fifths of the total number of labor organizations in the Philippines. So there's so many workers' organizations. They are the majority. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLI, encourages the entrepreneurial activities of labor organizations. This is only natural because in a uh, developing country like the Philippines, sometimes the uh, wage income is not enough uh, to sustain uh, the family. So they have to look for alternative sources of income. And running a business or an enterprise is a form of generating additional income. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, uh, last uh, topic or that I will be, this is the concluding part of my study. What are the strategies for strengthening ECC on the Philippines? One strategy is the mainstreaming strategy. 
And here, the policy advocacy is uh, a paramount uh, activity. Uh, we are now um, promoting this present bill. This is an act to promote the growth and development social enterprises as a means to alleviate poverty with preferential treatment to social enterprise with the poor as primary stakeholders. Many countries already have a social enterprise policy or, or law like Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, uh, even uh, Malaysia, but not uh, still we don't have one in the Philippines. There's also the Magna Carta Workers, the Informal Economy. This is an act to promote the institutionalization mechanisms for transitioning workers in the formal economy to the formal economy. These two uh, bills are still being deliberated in Congress. The second strategy is transformative strategy. Uh, this is where you know organizations that were uh, previously, uh, they were just um, um, focused on their members. Now they, they transform and uh, they organize you know, uh, their own uh, um, income generating activity. Yeah? Uh, so this is where, you know, like examples like Global Pro Multipostos Cooperative, Cebu Royal Plant Employee Salesforce Union, Mitsumi Philippines Workers Union. Uh, previously, when you say union, uh, they're only uh, working towards the uh, uh, advancement of labor rights. But now because of poverty, uh, they have uh, thought of engaging in uh, economic enterprise. So this is a transformation that uh, is being uh, promoted by civil society organizations. Of course, the government also is supporting this initiative. Uh, third, now next slide please. The third strategy is the community strategy. This is where, you know, a, a community organization, community-based organization, when it starts to operate, it only operates for the benefit of their members. But eventually it grows, and then it has developed the capacity of serving not only the members of the organization, but the community in general. So we find a number of these in the Philippines, like, for example, the Coalition of Municipal Christian Folk Association of Sibugay and the Picure Development Cooperative, they have now become development organizations, not only for the members, but for the entire community. So they are benefiting the entire community, whether or not the uh, uh, members of the community are members of the organization. The fourth and last uh, strategy is civil society strategy. That means to say that there is a large civil society organizations that is instrumental in developing community-based organizations. So the example is, here is the Pakasang Tilosan na mga samahang magsasaka. This is a national confederation of uh, family farmers in the Philippines. So it's a huge uh, federation and they are helping communities, equip communities in order that they also are able to generate their own enterprises, manage their own enterprises, and uh, create wealth for the purpose of benefiting not only the members, but the entire community. So with this, thank you for listening. And I hope that uh, we can enter into a very productive discussion. Thank you.